it's your girl Rachel in today's video I have been receiving some emails from you guys and I'm so happy that you guys are reaching out to me if you guys I know sometimes the comments might be a little intimidating so excuse me these gnats are just everywhere okay so I know the comments like I said they might be a little bit intimidating so if you do feel a bit more comfortable to email me any type of questions that you have please feel free you know my email is in my description box on my channel we got several places that you can look at if you need it and you know if you have questions feel free to reach out to me I love reading them and not only that but now I can make videos for you guys if you feel more comfortable sending me an email if you want me to make a video on that please I don't want to I'm not trying to limit anybody here and I want to help you guys out as much as I possibly can so the email that I'm going to address today is somebody reached out to me and they're, um, I believe they're either like a sophomore or a junior in college and they are trying to get into quality assurance and they want to know what courses and classes to take in order to become better and uh, the most efficient quality assurance engineer that you could possibly be during your time there. So, if you guys are interested to learn about what courses you should be taking in college to become a QA engineer, I'm going to give you a few seconds to grab your snacks, tea, and I'd appreciate if you like this video before we get rolling. Okay, so before I tell you what courses to take, I'm just going to take a step back here, share with you my background and my experience from when I went to college, because Unfortunately, at Penn State, they don't offer courses dedicated specifically to quality assurance. So I never had a full-on QA engineering course. But if this is your first time on the channel here, you know, I did create a free QA Essentials course on Udemy. So if you want, check out my Udemy link so that you can get your own free introductory course to quality assurance. So we can start off there for beginners, but like I said, since I didn't have any direct quality assurance courses, you want to do the next best thing. So you want to think of, well, what are quality assurance people using out here in the industry? Because every college is different or every technical institution that you might go to is going to offer different courses. This information that I'm going to provide for you guys will be different according to what school you want to go to. So I'm just going to stick with what Penn State offered for when I went there just so we can have like a general rule of thumb here. So quality assurance. Now the thing is, this is also going to be information that you can apply not just for quality assurance because me I wanted to be a web developer I also wanted to make smartphone applications too so this could be if you want to be a web developer um, an engineer just anything under that umbrella right so if you want to think about it from like a general perspective you want to think of well what's in today what are people using what are the top fortune 500 companies using on their day-to-day -day life. So this will require some of your own extensive research, but from what I can provide to you from my own knowledge is you want to be as versatile as you can with programming languages, but you also want to have a skill set of particular programming languages that you excel in. So this is going to be different and it also, you know, when it comes to programming, I feel as though you should start with languages that you're interested in and also you should take it even a step further and think of well what projects do you want to work on what interest sheesh whew. there's a net but you also want to think about what projects interest you and once you get about like, an idea of what projects you want to work with think about what type of programming languages are most commonly used and if you aren't sure there's always handy dandy google search here so you can get the ball rolling and try to figure out okay should I spend my time learning either python should I learn java should I learn sql should I learn whatever there's so many different languages 
So it really, I want to just, just take baby steps into this when it comes to taking your college courses too. Because I don't want to tell you to take a course and you take the course and then you're a month, two months in and you're just not enjoying it and you're just flunking out because it's too difficult or whatever the reason might be. So my best advice to you is to think about projects that you want to work on. Look at the programming languages that are being used, and then you want to see, well, maybe if my college might offer these courses, and I'm also going to talk about something they should also do as well. Okay, so another big thing and a big resource that you guys really need to take advantage of if you're a college student is your advisor. You need to really become close with whoever your advisor is, and also, if you have, um, it depends, I guess, on what t size school you go to. But for me, I went to kind of like a smaller um, sub-campus of Penn State. I didn't go to Penn State University, the big campus. I went to one of the sub-campuses. And one thing that was a common theme for the tech students is, well, some of the teachers would just teach different classes. So one year you might have them in your sophomore year for one class, then the next year you might have them for something else. So you want to build your network and you also want to build your relationships with your advisor and your professors and see what type of technology and programming stuff that they know of or might even use in their own industry. You want to be able to use your resources to... Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. But you want to use your resources to understand, like, what courses the campus you're going to might offer. You want to make yourself aware because me, there are so many things that I wish I knew about college, but I didn't understand until it just happened to me. Like, for me, I wanted to be an engineer, then I transitioned into IST, which is, stands for Information Services and Technology. So this had nothing to do with quality assurance. Penn State didn't offer anything for quality assurance. So pretty much I had to build my own path by trying to find my own internships to get into quality assurance. I had to try and figure out what type of programming languages are used in today's world and tools that are mentioned. Like if you... Didn't get a chance to watch some of my popular and favorite QA tools. Please watch the video. I'm going to post in one of these quarters because this will be very beneficial to know what type of tools are offered. And also some classes use these tools that I mentioned in that video so that it gives you some working knowledge as to what tools are even used in the industry today. So I didn't really give you guys a direct answer as to what courses you should take other than the programming languages that aligns with what you're interested in. So another thing about quality assurance that nobody really talks about is the business perspective. Quality assurance is more than just working and programming all day. So you also have to understand the business aspect of it too because quality assurance you are literally assuring the quality throughout the whole process of the software development life cycle. So you need to be able to, like you have to have your mindset shift from being able to not only just program, but you also need to shift your mindset to the business perspective too. Like how is this going to work? How is this going to tie into the product that we're trying to deliver to the, to the client? How are we going to be able to ensure the best quality possible. So from a business perspective, I think there should also be some business courses that you should take too. If you haven't already, um, there's a course that I had to take where you had to, it's business writing, it was required to do a business writing course. You had to, in that course, we pretty much just worked on our resumes, um, we worked on cover letters and stuff like that. And it's just really important to work on not just the programming aspect, but there's other things that come into play besides just being a good programmer. So that's why I also mentioned, take your business courses serious. If you have to take a business writing course like I did, take that serious because these courses will really 
help you get a leg up in the industry because a lot of people think that if you're going into programming, you just have to be good at whatever programming language that they're using, which to a degree is a little truth, but it's not the whole truth. There's a you got to look at the big picture when it comes into this. And Unfortunately, like I said, I didn't have a direct quality assurance course, so I had to make do and make the best of the classes that I was able to take, such as the business writing course. So these are the two main things that I think you should focus most of your attention on, either your programming languages courses or your business courses, such as your business writing course, because that is only going to be beneficial to you in terms of make, creating the best resume possible for yourself, cover letters all that jazz, and if you really want to take a bonus takeaway tip from this video for courses that you might want to consider looking into when you're in college, now I'm only saying this because part of me feels like maybe I should have done this because I've had, I've actually had quite a few of my friends um, major in IST but minor in something else, so you could minor in business or you can even, which is pretty beneficial for us techie people, so you can minor in SRA, is it SRA? Security Risk Analysis. You could do that. You can learn about security and all that too. That's another great feature, and also it's something that Penn State offers. So Penn State, you can major in IST and minor in business, or you can minor in security risk. And me, I should have minored in something. I kind of, if I had a regret, about college courses, I guess my only regret is that I didn't minor in anything. But at the time when I was in college, I didn't want to put the extra courses on myself. I just wanted to get my degree and call it a day. That's really what my mindset was. I didn't want to have to take extra courses on myself. So if I had to think of any regrets, that probably would be it. Just not minoring in something else. So if you have an opportunity to minor in something, you know, this is just food for thought because it's going to make your resume and just you as a person look more well-rounded and more valuable in the marketplace. If you minor in something, it's going to make you more valuable in the marketplace. It's as simple as that. You can either take advantage of that opportunity or you could be like me and just, just do the bare minimum to get your degree. So that is a choice up to you, but... I would really recommend that. I think that is something that is really cool. I've had a lot of friends that I graduated with minor in something, whether if it was business or SRA. So these are other alternatives I would probably recommend for you to look into. And if you guys have any other courses that I might have missed, please leave your comments down below. If you have any other things or useful tools that might be helpful for college students, please leave your comments down below. Let's educate the community here. Let's make this a place where we can grow and be the best quality assurance engineers that we can possibly be. So if you aren't already a part of your family yet, what are you doing? Smack that subscribe and bell notification button so that you never miss another post from me again. I'll see you next time.